So today I'm out here in my garage to test two things. One, testing out this battery here. This is a new mini sized 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour battery. And I'm gonna be testing how much power I really get out of this battery fully charged. Then also I'm gonna be testing how long a 100 amp hour battery can run a small chest freezer that all of this is sitting on top of. So let me show you this chest freezer real quick. So this is a smaller chest freezer by Frigidaire that we picked up a few years ago and it has been an awesome addition to the home. We have two refrigerators, one in the kitchen and one in the utility room and they have really tiny freezers. And this, crazy enough, has more freezer space than both of those refrigerators combined. So this holds a lot of our overflow. We do buy some things in bulk. So I wanna know if I lose power, how long can I run this thing and keep my food cold on a 100 amp hour battery? So that's what we're gonna test. So what I have set up here is I have the battery, it is fully charged, and I have one out gauge lead wires going from the battery into this inverter. On the negative side, I have a 300 amp shunt that is connected to this battery monitor here so we can monitor the power that comes out of this battery. It's only monitoring the battery. So it's gonna be telling us how much power is going out of this battery into this inverter. So every inverter is gonna have some overhead on it, but it has these screens right here that as it's running, it's gonna show us here what it thinks the voltage of the battery is after the lead cables, and then also what voltage and amperage that it is putting out. So we'll be able to understand at that point what really is going to the freezer and what is being used by the inverter. But I've got all of this stuff set up, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff turned on. First thing I'm gonna do is turn on the battery monitor, which uses I mean, almost nothing when it comes to power. As you can see, the resting voltage right now is 13.6 on the battery. So now I'm gonna turn on the inverter. The inverter also thinks it's 13.6, which is good. That means we don't really have much loss when it comes out of the battery into the inverter. The inverter is gonna be kicking out right now 113 volts, which is great. It should be around 110. And now I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the freezer and plug it in to one of these outlets to get this thing started. Also, before I do that, if you'll notice, it's using about four watts of power to get the inverter powered up. So that's actually really good. Usually on inverters of this size, this is a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. The few other ones that I have in this range usually pull about 10 watts. So this one's only pulling about four at idle. That's pretty good. This is the power plug to the freezer. And we're gonna get this started. The freezer hasn't even kicked on yet. I've plugged it into the inverter. The inverter's not even putting out any power to this chest freezer because the chest freezer hasn't even asked for it. I do see the green light that shows the power light. So the chest freezer is saying it's on. It just doesn't need any power right now because it's keeping everything cold inside. But it won't take long before this thing decides to kick the compressor on to keep it cold and we're going to keep an eye out for that to see how much power this chest freezer uses when the compressor is running all right so as you can see here i had to wait 19 minutes for the compressor on this deep freeze here to actually kick on and if you saw it which i think the camera called it it went up to like 600 watts of power maybe close to 700 it was six something and then it dropped down quickly. Well, that's very normal of a compressor motor. It takes a jolt of, of inrush of power and it starts it up. And then of course, once it starts up, then that wattage drops down quite a bit. So we're running at about 75-ish watts. And that's what I would expect to see while the compressor's running and cooling this chest freezer down. But again, as I pointed out, it was 19 minutes before I got this thing to even kick on. So if you tried to calculate this, just using the math, you know, you'd be calculating 70 watts or so and then adding up the capacities and everything, but you would probably be way off because there's the real world of it will turn off, it will turn on, how well it's insulated, what temperatures it is on the outside of this. Like right now it's probably 60 degrees in my garage. So there's a lot of different variables here that if you don't do a real world test, it's kind of hard to calculate. So that's why I'm doing this test. I wanna know, again, what this battery is gonna give me, how long it's gonna run this chest freezer, what the overheads are, and really if I lose power, how long is this one battery gonna keep all of my frozen items safe? And we're gonna see. So 
I'm gonna keep an eye on this and when the voltage starts getting low and the battery starts getting close to the bottom, we're gonna see what it is. And then at that point, we're gonna see what cuts out first. Does the inverter turn off first with low voltage protection or does the BMS in the battery turn off first? with low voltage protection. It's just a toss up which one's gonna kick it out first. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this run and we'll see how far we get. I'm guessing at least two days. If you think you know, put it down in the comments. Let us know what you thought it was gonna be. All right, well, there's the chirping from the inverter. With such a low wattage draw, it actually let the voltage get down lower than it normally does, but probably because it's been able to maintain over 110 volts. Wow, I've never seen it still be able to maintain over 110 volts with this low voltage coming in. I've also never seen a lithium iron phosphate battery get down to this low voltage without turning the BMS off. All right. So the inverter is what cut out on this one. The battery did 1.34 kilowatt hours which was 104 amp hours with the varying voltage that it had. And this thing ran for 54 hours. So you're pretty good at saying you probably will get about two days off of a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour battery. And this again is a pretty decent sized little chest freezer. I mean, it is definitely a small chest freezer, but it can hold quite a bit of food. So two days off of a 100 amp hour battery, I mean, that might easily get you through an emergency, which of course you could always have a backup generator to charge it all back up, but I think it did good and it answered the question. Hope this information was helpful. Thank y'all very much for watching. Y'all take care.